Hello and welcome to the Dateline Northeast, a roving report, a program that gives you an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I'm your host Nidhi and the highlights of today's program are Prime Minister Modi reviews flood situation in the Northeast. Centre assess the condition of national highways in Manipur. Mrs. United Nations 2017 Roshni Hassan from Assam enlightens the true spirit of being a woman. Dairy farming evolves as an alternative source of sustainable livelihood in Meghalaya. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired a high-level meeting to review the situation in the flood-ravaged northeastern states. Chief Ministers and senior officials from the affected states of Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland and Manipur also attended the meeting held in Guwahati City, a report. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired a high-level meeting in Guwahati to take stock of the flood situation in India's northeastern states at Assam Administrative Staff College, Khanapara. The meeting was also attended by senior administrative officials and chief ministers of the concerned states which included Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur and Nagaland. His visit to Assam is pronounced as one of the first where various central government agencies carried out studies of damage caused by recent floods in the region. Modi announced a special package of Rs 2,000 crore for the relief and rehabilitation of flood-affected people and for flood mitigation measures in the states which are inundated every year. Moreover, Assam received an additional amount of Rs 250 crore for immediate rehabilitation. An international committee will also be set up to study the Brahmaputra River to improve its water-holding capacity to help prevent the annual floods. The centre had also released Rs 300 crore in June for Assam to repair the damaged infrastructure in the floods. Flood management and damage control measures were discussed in the meeting. Prime Minister has said that this is a recurring flood coming every year. So now time has come to permanently settle it, permanently solve it. That is why he has said that a high power group with uh, scientists, technologists, engineers, bureaucrats will be constituted. And that group will be, uh, initially, a corpus of rupees 100 crore will be given to that group so that they can study the course of the Brahmaputra River and suggest remedial measure so that flood problem can ultimately permanently solve. Modi's visit to Assam reiterates his commitment towards a long-term solution to the recurring floods in the Northeast. A memorandum was also presented on flood erosion to the Prime Minister by State BJP Party, Assam Gana Parishad and Borolan People Party and Prime Minister took a serious note of it. The central government has also sanctioned over Rs 1200 crore for things like repairing, maintenance and strengthening of roads, highways, bridges and other damaged infrastructure. PM sahab yahan pe khas karke north east mein jo jitne bhi jo discussions hua hai usko review karne ke liye yahan pe aaye hue hain aur sabhi states ka saath mein chief minister aur jitne bhi jo officers ke saath mein baith ke interaction abhi ye hua ja raha hai to hamara state ka just abhi khatam ho ke main bahar nikala hu aur jis prakar se PM sahab bahut detailedly wahan pe ye jis prakar se jo problem jo hua hai bahut detailedly wo puchte hain bahut detailedly hum log ne interaction kiya hai तो ये पूरे हम नॉर्थ ईस्ट के लिए बड़ा ही खुशी का बात है कि प्राइम मिनिस्टर खुद यहाँ नॉर्थ ईस्ट में चल के यहाँ का जो दुख तकलीफ को समझने के लिए खुद यहाँ आया है तो मैं काफी इस चीज को अप्रिशिएट करता हूँ Prior to Prime Minister Modi's visit to the state, a seven-member inter-ministerial central team had also visited Assam on July 25th for four days to assess the flood situation and the damage caused by it. Modi also announced an ex gratia of Rs 2 lakh each for the families of those killed and Rs 50,000 each of those injured in Assam floods. We have explained about the damage caused by flood and then the unusual rain had affected so many households and so many and we have lost about 19, 19 lives and five people are still missing. So this is really unusual for Nagaland. So we have a pricing, and uh, we we have we have we have told the prime minister that uh, we'll assess the loss, and detailed report will be sent to the government. 
The floods in Assam this year claimed 83 lives and affected over 20 lakh people. Moreover, states of Manipur, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland and Mizoram too were hit badly by the annual deluge. Centre government has been continuously working to provide better connectivity to the people across the country. In landlocked state of Manipur, Union Minister of State for Road Transport, Highways and Shipping, Pond Radha Krishnan recently made a spot assessment on the two lifelines of the state. India has the second largest road networks across the world and over the years road transportation has gradually increased with the improvement in connectivity between cities, towns and villages in the country. In order to give better in-road connectivity, Centre plans to develop a total of 66,117 kilometres of roads under different projects such as National Highways Development Project, Special Accelerated Road Development Project in Northeast Region. In the landlocked Manipur, National Highways 2 and 37 have been the lifeline of the people as the state does not have rail lines to transport essential commodities. Union Minister of State for Road Transport, Highways and Shipping, Pond Radha Krishnan, recently inspected the conditions of the highways. The centre government also sanctioned Rs 26 crores from Central Road Fund for maintenance and repair of roads. In Manipur, we have 11 numbers of national highways. In this 1,680 kilometer length, NHADCL has 831 kilometer, and the national highway with PWD is 445 kilometer, and. 421 kilometer is with BRO, Border Road Organization. During his visit to Senapati district, the Union Minister instructed officials concerned to rectify the technical flaws of the Modbung and Pongmol bridges, which comes under National Highway 2. The Union Minister also announced that 90 kilometers length from Tamenglong to Peren via Lomdi Pabram has been declared in principal National Highway and National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited has been initiating on preparing the detailed project report. He further said that another 223 kilometers length of National Highway at a cost of Rs 2130 crores will be announced this year. The Union Minister also announced that the rehabilitation of Chura Chandpur to the Y section of National Highway 102B with the length of 162 km is likely to be completed by March 2018 at worth cost of Rs 168 crores. Strengthening and widening of two lanes with paved shoulders from Impal and Mao section of National Highway 2 is going on. It will be started soon. 90 kilometers of length at a cost of 451 crores. Four laning of Impal and Moray section of NH 102, 65 kilometers length is approved. The cost of the project would be 1630 crores. And we have cleared, we have sanctioned this amount this year. The centre has also approved upgradation and widening of 65 kilometres of Imphal to Moray section of National Highway 39 in Manipur at cost of Rs 1600 crores. This will help to provide international connectivity, deepen the trade and people-to-people -people ties with East and Southeast Asian countries. The minister also said that for upgradation of state highways to national highways of 1,485 kilometers length will be completed in next six months. Moving on, India's northeast region is known not just for its natural beauty, but it is also home to some of the country's most beautiful women. Today we introduce you to a mother who embodies beauty with brains and was recently crowned Mrs. United Nations 2017. Let's have a look. Over the years, women from Northeast India have made incredible contributions to the fields of art, literature, music, sports and fashion. When it comes to the field of fashion, girls from this region are making a mark both at the national and international levels. 
Meet Roshni Hassan, 31 year old hailing from Assam's Guwahati city that left no stone unturned to grab the most coveted title of Mrs United Nations 2017 who represented India in Kingston Jamaica. The whole team of Mrs India Earth they they uh, selected me to represent India in Mrs United Nations pageant jo fil haal hi mein hui thi Jamaica Kingston mein so i really uh, did a lot of preparation and uh, i went there i participated i competed with a lot of uh, women from all over the countries from all over the world and uh, i'm the winner now i'm mrs united nations i also got people's choice ambassador award online mujhe bahut logon ne voting kiya tha so i got the highest votes i'm happy ki uh, maine uh, india ke liye crown laya hai Hassan wears many hats. She is a businesswoman, a writer, and a social activist. This is not the first time that this mother of a five-year-old has won a beauty pageant. She was adjudged second runner-up in Mrs. India Earth 2016. Ever since, there has been no looking back for Hassan. She gave up her job of eight years in the construction sector to represent the country in such prestigious pageants. Hassan has been constantly supported and encouraged by her family in her journey so far. कभी ये लाइन में वो थी ही नहीं पहले दफा जो मिसेस इंडिया आर्ट के लिए 2016 में दिल्ली में गई थी जहां वो पार्टिसिपेट की फोर्टी फाइनलिस्ट से वो टेन टॉप में आ गई उसके पीछे उसके बाद में उसे सेकंड रनर साहब का खिताब दिया गया लेकिन जब मिसेस यूनाइटेड नेशंस के लिए 2017 के लिए रवाना हो गई उसे सेलेक्ट किया गया तो मैं यही चाहती थी जो वो जीत के आए Hassan believes that women are an essential part of the society and must always work to achieve their dreams despite all odds explore their talents and fulfill their aspirations ye kehna chahungi since uh, miss uh, miss bahut ho ho rahe the aage bahut uh, miss ye pageants bahut hua hai but then nowadays uh, mrs pageants are coming up a lot आप देख आप सुनते होंगे मिसेस यूनिवर्स मिसेस वर्ल्ड मिसेस यूनाइटेड नेशंस मिसेस ये मिसेस वो मैं सोचती हूँ बहुत अच्छा ही हो रहा है जो हो रहा है क्योंकि वी वीमेन हम लोग क्या करते हैं वी हम लोग घर के अंदर ही रहते हैं चार दीवारी के अंदर स्पेशली आफ्टर हैविंग अ किड ऑल्सो आई वॉन्ट टू गिव दिस मैसेज टू एवरी वीमेन आउट दे कि आप लोग आप वी वीमेन हैव अ लॉट ऑफ पोटेंशियल इन आर सेल्व आप लोग घर के अंदर ही मत रहिए जिसकी जो टैलेंट है वो आगे लाइए हसन सक्सेस वेंडी रुसो ऑफ यूएसए मिसेस यूनाइटेड नेशंस 2016 शी आल्सो वन द पीपल्स चॉइस एंबेसडर अवार्ड इन द सेम कांटेस्ट शी इज एसोसिएटेड विद पिंकथॉन एंड अ नॉन गवर्नमेंटल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड एम्स टू वर्क फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑफ द सोसाइटी हसन कंसीडर्स हरसेल्फ एज एन अचीवर रादर देन अ विनर एज शी बिलीव्स अ विनर इज नॉट एन अचीवर बट एन अचीवर इज अ विनर This philosophy is also what keeps her going. Success stories of women like Hassan serve as inspiration to other women in the country. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the northeast recently. Concerned over rising incidents of human animal conflicts and poaching, India and Bangladesh held this second annual dialogue on conservation of elephants. The two sides emphasized on the conservation of elephants in reference to transboundary movement of this animal and decided to secure the corridor for the safe passage of migratory elephants along the border areas. A high level discussion was also held on smuggling of elephants for captive use which is a serious concern. The meeting also took note that fencing of the Indo-Bangla border would affect the natural migration routes of elephants and other wild animals. National Cadet Corps Director General Lieutenant General Vinod Vashisht recently visited Sri Lanka and interacted with young NCC cadets there. While addressing the meeting, Vashisht encouraged the cadets to build qualities of leadership and persistence in them. Cadets from all age groups gathered from all across the region for the congregation. The Director General said efforts were on to broaden the reach of the NCC in the remote corners of the northeastern region. Union Minister of State for Home Affairs Kiran Rijiju inaugurated the Sashastra Seema Bal Rescue and Relief Team in the premises of the Gali Pukri in Guwahati to provide immediate relief to local people during natural calamities. 
Speaking during the inaugural ceremony, Rijiju said the contribution of the SSP and other forces during relief and rescue operations has been immense and must be appreciated. The new team was raised from SSP's existing workforce in its 18 sectors in Assam and are formed with modern equipment, he said. While adding besides providing succor to the people, it would also provide help and facilities to the other stakeholders and sister organizations to work jointly to overcome the calamity. The Controller and Auditor General of India presented the audit reports of three different departments of Manipur government. Addressing a press conference in Imphal, DJ Shankar gave a brief description of the reports of the Manipur state government. He further said that even though the state government had decided to devolve the power of 16 departments relating to development and other activities in the rural areas to the Panchayati Raj institutions, it lies only on paper without any actual devolution of power or fund till date. Identification of work programs, recommendation of beneficiaries and other local level activities that should be empowered to the panchayats was also discussed. Expressing concern over the flood-affected areas in Assam, Union Minister Nitin Gadkari recently sanctioned 200 crore rupees for immediate repair of national highways ravaged by flood in Assam and promised more funds. The Road Transport and Highways Minister also sanctioned 400 crore rupees for dredging work in Brahmaputra and said Brahmaputra Express Highway will be constructed in Assam as a highway come embankment to check flood. The sanctions came after a delegation from Assam led by Chief Minister Sarbanand Sonowal called on Gadkari. Ahead of Prime Minister's proposed visit to the state, Manipur Chief Minister N. B. Rain Singh along with his cabinet ministers visited the proposed site for National Sports University at Kotruk village where Narendra Modi is expected to lay the foundation stone of the university. The team visited various sites and assessed the ground labelling work taken up by the Public Works Department. Chief Minister also met the villagers and received the warm welcome. The villagers also put the grievances before him and requested the Chief Minister to provide jobs to the locals in the upcoming National Sports University. Commemorating the birth centenary of late Deen Dayal Upadhyay, President of Bharatiya Janasangh, the forerunner of the present-day Bharatiya Janata Party, a book on his life and works was released on the occasion. Deen Dayal Upadhyay Sampurnavang My Book, The Summary of Life and Works of Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay, was released on the occasion at Research and Development Foundation for Integral Humanism in Assam's Gobahati city. The book was inaugurated by Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonowal, Union IT and Law Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad, State Education Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma, BJP State President Ranjit Das, writer Anuradha Sarma Pujari and other dignitaries. Research and Development Foundation Chairman Mahesh Sharma in his inaugural speech said, Upadhyay strive for undivided India and it remained as the goal of his life. Sharma said Upadhyay with his undying commitment was engaged in Kashmir Andolan and freeing Goa from the clutches of the Portuguese and Pondicherry from France. Dairy farming in India's northeast region has emerged as a boon for locals, creating sustainable means of livelihood for many, especially educated youth. This could not have been possible without the support of the government, which is making all efforts to launch schemes and programs to encourage dairy farming, opening a gateway for better venues, thereby generating income for the people of the state. To boost up dairy farming and encourage farmers and unemployed youth in the state, the government of Meghalaya is making efforts to ensure sustainable livelihood to the people of the state. In Meghalaya state, dairy farming has evolved in the last few decades and with the help of technological interventions, it has become even more attractive for the younger generation to take to dairy farming as one of the most attractive and sustainable livelihood model. In order to ensure new avenues for livelihood opportunities and to encourage educated youth to take advantage of the available natural resources, as part of state livestock mission, recently the Chief Minister Mukul Sangma handed over the Holstein Frisian breed of cattle to six self-help groups of Southwest Karo Hills at Ampati. 
During the function, the Chief Minister said 10,000 families in the state would benefit from the ambitious livestock mission wherein Holstein fishing high-yielding Tyree cattle would be given away to the beneficiaries on a cluster approach. Holstein Frisians originated from the Dutch provinces of North Holland and they are known as the world's highest milk yielding Tyree animals. This program is uh, a continuation of our live program which is uh, designed to create a sustainable livelihood and uh, to ultimately ensure that uh, the livelihood opportunities in the rural areas are found to be as sustainable and as attractive as elsewhere else, uh, elsewhere. Under the Livestock Mission Program, more and more farmers are grabbing this opportunity to earn a livelihood which could be earned in their own backyard. Likewise, the cattle farming has helped many farmers like Stella Marag and others in the region by creating an additional source of income in the family. Many daily wages in the region are now adopting the cattle farming to generate an additional income and live a better living. Farmers in the Karo Hills regards this livestock mission as a blessing which will bring about newer opportunities based on demand and supply of milk products. Initiating with giving continuous training to farmers and build capacity for value addition of milk products in the state, dairy farming will also help to generate more employment opportunities and open up new avenues. Many skill development centers in India's northeast region provide skill training and upgradation program to the people, especially to the youth. A handloom and handicraft center in Imphal is providing training to destitute and underprivileged women folks in crafting and weaving to provide them with a means of livelihood. We have a report. With Prime Minister Narendra Modi's initiative on Skill India mission, many like-minded people and entrepreneurs have taken up the initiatives and reached out to the youth to train, share and help to explore the possibilities on sustainable livelihoods. In the landlocked Manipur, Renu Hansloom and Handicraft is striving hard to impart training to women in weaving and crafting to provide them with a means of livelihood and promote the rich crafts and the indigenous clothing of the state over the past two decades. Setting a goodwill example and working towards the upliftment of women's condition in the state, the centre has trained many destitute and homeless children on making refined embroidery and designs on handloom and weaving and other skill development. So far, the centre has trained more than 5,000 students hailing from various parts of the state. Established in the year 1992, the centre continues working for the upliftment for socio-economic development with special focus on women empowerment. I do my pond, the Harapone, do my Saba, Tapa, Lone Pinimo, I used to then give a man the name Harise, Moinare, Je, Quenoloita, Mogu Kuchuman, the Gilpam, Laude, Saba, Tapa, training, Mapimaro, Lona Tobi, a coin of Popo, Ishagum, the Kaleva. I do I next coin Shemjeru, which I Mahayal and Chukale, Mandi, Hogita, I know Popo Ishadi, I know Shem, Manangi Shembam to one a Kalmbiba. I do got. Apart from conducting various activities such as workshop, seminar, social awareness programs, social services, the centre is also engaged on taking care of the poor and the needy. Currently, there are more than 20 orphan girls working at the centre receiving free training and accommodations.
with over 20 permanent and 500 contractual employees, the centre has now expanded to the remote hill districts of the Manglong, Chanto, Okru, Churachampu, as well as to the neighbouring states of Nagaland, Assam and Mizoram. Yung the Tabato the na labor soro po diya si the laraga ko ay pasata man ako ay kano have the have the pasakra la ay ako ay nasisin na basu pangyay do na napan. Providing such opportunities and platform to the downtrodden section of the society will go a long way in improving the socio-economic status of the society. With that, we've come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia underscore ni. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host Nidhi. Goodbye and take care.